hello friends welcome back to pharma for you and here we are back with our new video uh, properties of colloids so let's begin with our new video uh, starting with water colloids the term colloids implies glue like in greek uh, that uh, it implies that they are glue like uh, if we talk at about general then it is a system where dispersed particle dispersed particle of size range colloid okay uh, the particle if they are very small then they are molecular above than that they are colloids and above than that they are coarse particles and uh, if a system where dispersed particle of colloid range and distributed uniformly in a dispersion system then it is called colloidal system if you are talking about the size 0.5 to 1 micrometer is the particle range uh, in which the colloid resides so properties of colloids uh, there are three major properties of colloids optical properties kinetic properties and electrical properties uh, optical properties uh, actually why we need to study properties actually whenever we go for a colloidal particle range then uh, we need to make assure that the particle range is perfect that they are not in the molecular range or they are not in the coarse range so we have to validate or assure after their formation that they are in the colloidal range so with the help of their properties we can identify their uh, uh, we can identify that they are in colloidal range so there is a need to study properties of colloids so first is optical properties kinetic properties and electrical properties optical properties under the optical properties uh, they are tyndall effect ultra microscopy electron microscopy and light scattering in kinetic properties brownian moment diffusion osmosis and viscosity and under electrical properties the properties are electrophoresis electroosmosis sedimentation potential and electrical double layer effect so starting with optical properties tyndall effect uh, as they are in the colloidal range then they so show some uh, special properties so tyndall effect uh, when a narrow beam of light is passed through a colloidal dispersion the light become illuminates and it become scattered and uh, the light which is scattered that is due to the tyndall effect that can be seen with the help of microscopy and uh, if we can um, classify the microscopy which is used to see the tyndall effect then uh, we can use uh, normal microscopy uh, then ultra microscopy and then electron microscopy actually the normal microscopy doesn't have any uh, uh, effect or uh, positive result uh, showing some tyndall effect so we have to go for ultra microscopy so ultra microscopy when a colloidal dispersion viewed through a ultra microscope against a dark background at a right angle beam it appears as a bright spot so it is due to the tyndall effect uh, in ultra microscopy we can see a a uh, bright spot so we can uh, measure the diameter of that bright spot which is a colloidal particle so with the help of this tyndall effect and ultra microscopy we can uh, determine the particle shape and particle size then uh, electron microscopy it provides a better picture of actual particle rather than ultra microscopy that if you want an actual uh, structure and actual size determination of colloidal particles then we have to go for electron microscopy now light scattering when a beam of a light passes through a colloidal dispersion some is scattered it estimates size and shape of particle so it is similar to tyndall effect that uh, when a when a beam of a light is passed through a colloidal dispersion some of them is uh, most of them is reflected uh, to one direction that is uh, at a perpendicular angle and uh, rest is the scattered so this scattering is used to determine the size and shape that is a tyndall effect 
now uh, kinetic properties uh, as we all know that kinetic means the moment or motion of motion of a particle starting with it uh, brownian mo motion the colloidal particle in dispersion are always in a state of random motion robert brown has observed it first so it is called brownian motion so as as we know that brownian motion is the movement of particles uh, movement of uh, particles in a dispersion whenever we are going to prepare a dispersion uh, of coarse range or colloidal range or molecular range then uh, specifically when when colloidal particles are there then they show brownian motion so brownian motion is a randomization random movement of particles so they will not settle down and will scatter and their motion will let the dispersion to be stable for longer times now second is diffusion it is a movement of solute molecule from a region of higher concentration to a lower concentration until the concentration of system become uniform throughout as we all know that the diffusion the process uh, in which the solute molecule move from uh, higher concentration to lower concentration as it is um, similar in all cases and in the colloidal range also now osmotic pressure uh, this property depends on the number of particle in dispersion number of particle uh, denotes uh, the osmotic pressure of a any liquid uh, it will be denoted as p equal to c upon m rt uh, for this viscosity it depends on the shape of colloidal particle uh, the shape of colloidal particle if uh, they are sphere then the properties viscosity is uh, low and if they are uh, in length or height then the viscosity may be higher uh, next is electrical properties uh, electrical properties uh, first is electrophoresis uh, the moment of electrically charged colloidal particle under the influence of an applied electric field is called electrophoresis uh, generally colloidal particle range uh, particle having uh, electrical double lever over them uh, as we go for smaller particles from coarse particle to colloidal particle then if we apply any energy then this energy will be converted to a electrical double layer around colloidal particle and this property we can use for electrophoresis okay it, it is not in the coarse dispersion but it is in the colloidal range so electrophoresis is better can be seen in a colloidal range particles next is electroosmosis the moment of the dispersion medium through a porous material under the influence of an applied electric field is called electroosmosis electroosmosis is inner so inverse of electrophoresis sedimentation potential uh, this is the potential difference set up between top and bottom of a suspension of solid particles in a liquid when the particles settle under the influence of gravity so sedimentation potential uh, may also be a property of a colloidal dispersion to identify uh, the particle size uh, uh, size or uh, their weight molecular weight as their sedimentation potential denotes uh, how they are settling and how the sedimentation take place and the speed of sedimentation uh, electrical double layer theory uh, in this theory the charge is imparted to the particle by placing ion which are absorbed preferentially at immobile points which of the first layer the second layer consists of diffuse mobile ions the charge present on both the layer is equal these two layers are immense leads to development of potential called zeta or electrokinetic potential as a result of this potential develop across the particle under the influence of electrical field this particle move as i told earlier that when we move for colloidal range of particle from a coarse uh, particles uh, then we apply a type of energy or work work has to be done and when a work has to be done and the energy or the work which is implies on the particles it will be converted into the charge uh, the, the charge is the electrical double layer and uh, this electrical double layer then can be used for electrophoresis and electroosmosis so thank you uh, for watching this video uh, you can like share and subscribe our video and for uh, more information you can visit our uh, website pharma for you thank you so much